Hello, family of Gene Day. We, I wish I could be with you today, but uh, we're gathered together in these unusual circumstances to celebrate the long and well-lived life of Gene Day. We're here to remember Jean, to honor her, and pay tribute to a remarkable woman. Jean entered this life on Earth July 5th, 1922, then exited and went to a reward on April 16th, 2020. So this leaves us with two bookends which span 97 years. And we think about what happened and the experiences that she had in those 97 years. It, it's almost hard to wrap your mind around. And I know that uh, she meant something special to each one of you. Her life and memories engraved in your hearts and your minds forever. Here are some thoughts that uh, Donna and Shannon and Terry shared with, with me last week. And I quote, People in Jean's early life and present usually can recall her with one or two words. Great lady, foxy lady, mean Jean, spitfire, witty, loving, compassionate, talented, funny, independent, stubborn, and speaks her mind. She loved her family and enjoyed her grandchildren. She was always making special memories, like tea parties with coffee and lots of sugar playing in the rain and making mud pies, teaching Girl Scout and 4-H, shopping and going out to eat. Today, after all these years, there are, are fond, these are fondly remembered memories. If we were playing at Friends and she whistled, we better go home where we didn't want her to whistle a second time. Jean's love of animals was not always your common dogs and cats. There were horses, snakes, and an alligator, and a par parakeet that was very verbal. When she went to Miller's Manor, she told everyone she had an elephant named Susie and that she, she hired someone to take care of her. She actually just rode the elephant but wanted the picture to prove that she indeed had an elephant. Anyone that knew Jean and remembered her with uh, fond memories and much love. Jean had many adjectives that described her in life. When I went to visit her in the hospital, uh, the quality she exuded with ease was this quality, and it was kind of her attitude. I will tell you what I think, whether you like it or not, just cowboy up and accept it. She looked up when I walked into her room, and she demanded, who are you? I replied, I'm Terry and Donna's pastor, in which she replied very nonchalant, you sure don't look like a preacher. I said, yeah, but I got a piece of paper to prove it. Typical Jean. We chatted, and I prayed with her. Her legacy will live in her girls and her grandkids, I'm sure, and I see that spunk in all of you ladies, and that's a compliment. I, I see it in Shanna, I, I see it in Terry, and I see it in Donna. And I, re, I remember with Terry uh, in Ukraine, uh, straightforward, she was right out on the street trying to straighten this drunk guy out, so I think <laughs> Jean would have probably appreciated that. And I'm sure there's many more stories. It's pretty hard to sum up 97 years in a few minutes. Jean has moved on, and that's a reality today, that she has crossed the river. As we all someday must do, it's part of life as humans. She's entered into the spiritual realm. She has gone on and left that earthly shell here and moved on to glory, actually. Where we go depends on the choices that you and I make while on this earth. Actually, it depends on what we do with Jesus Christ. It's not what church we belong to. It's like Keith Green said, uh, going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than going to McDonald's makes you a hamburger. But what it relies on the relationships, uh, the relationship and the faith that you have in Jesus Christ. And uh, Jean most assuredly had this relationship with Christ, so there's no worry about that this morning where she's at. Jesus has many names, also known as the Son of God, Jesus Christ, our Lord, God with skin on. That's my favorite definition of him. Savior, Redeemer, Friend of Sinners lover of all people, his mission on earth, show people what God the Father is like, to love, to laugh, and to cry with us, to share in our human condition. He shows us how to live and how to die. He lived and died a horrible death for our sin to redeem us, and he rose from the dead to prove it. So the question comes down for us who are alive today, what will you do with Jesus? The choices we make on this earth affects our future, our eternity, actually. The most important choice you and I will ever make is to accept or reject Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Jesus offers humans two kinds of life. One, here on earth, he offers us abundant life in all its fullness, John 10.10. 10. 
a life we, if we accepted a purpose, fulfillment, adventure, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's Galatians 5.22. Second, he offers us eternal, unending, forever life with him in the Father's house. In John 14, 1 through 6, Jesus tells his disciples about his Father's place, the home that he has prepared for us. Jesus said, don't be troubled. You must, you trust God, now trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's home, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. If this were not so, I would tell you plainly, when everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be where I am. And you know where I'm going and how to get there. No, we don't know, Lord Thomas said. We haven't any idea where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He offers us this life. It's completely up to us. It's our choice whether we accept it or not. Jean made her choice, and you and I have to make ours. And my prayer is that, as we all listen to this, that we have all decided to choose Christ. Just love God. Love each other. Keep Gene's memory alive. And I'm sure that you will. The stories will continue. I want to close with Psalm 18, 1 through 6. It's David's great confidence in his God, in our God. David said, I love you, Lord. You are my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my Savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the strength of my salvation and my stronghold. I will call on the Lord who is worthy of praise, for he saves me from my enemies. The ropes of death surrounded me. The floods of destruction swept over me. The grave wrapped its ropes around me. Death itself stared me in the face. But in my distress, I cried out to the Lord. Yes, I prayed to my God for help. He heard me from my sanctuary. My cry reached his ears. I'm sure glad that the grave is not the end, but it's the beginning. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for Jean's life. I thank you for all the memories and the love that she has left in her family. And I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would be with these fine folks now and comfort them and hold them close at this, in this hour of grief and this time of loss. Be with them, Lord, and, and, and just give them a great day as a family the rest of this day. We ask these things in the name of Christ. Amen. Steve has a song for us now. Still on the roses, and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses, and He walks with. Talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever. sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my Tells me I am his own, and the joy we 
joy we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. And the joy we share as we tarry ever mm-hmm. 